Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you all for subscribing. I really appreciate it. My ultimate goal is to help you, the patient, better take care of your mouth, better understand the importance of the health of your mouth, just overall have a better dental visit when you go. So let's dive into probing. So it's one of the main things that we do, especially if you're a new patient, if you're an established patient, it's something that should be done every six months or one time a year. So it depends on how healthy or unhealthy your mouth is as to the protocol that your hygienist or your dentist is probing your mouth. So in general dentistry, when I worked in a general dentist office, I worked in one for 19 years, um, we would probe once a year. So I would probe everybody one time a year. Now I work now in a periodontal office where we specialize in maintaining periodontal disease and we probe everybody every six months. So everyone gets probed twice a year. So we're thoroughly checking the health of the pockets and this is the main way for us to know how healthy or unhealthy your mouth is. So you're going to hear my sidekick in the background and if he gets super annoying he's getting kicked out of the room. See this old face? He's loud, he grunts, but he's my baby. So, you hear all that? <laughs> so he likes to sit here and hang out. There are different names and terms used with probing the mouth. So it can be called pocket charting, it can be we're checking your pockets, we're getting your pocket depths, we're doing some probing. You know, and some patients are like, I don't know what the hell that means. We're not checking your pockets for money. I mean, even though I joke about that, but we're not. So, <laughs> so what is a periodontal pocket? The periodontal pocket is the space between your tooth and your gum. So your tooth sits in bone, the gum tissue covers the roots of the teeth, and then there's a space around every tooth. And it's actually the space that you can floss underneath. If you've watched the flossing video, you'll understand what that means. When you get to the full depth of flossing or water picking, so that pot, the gum tissue, it's firm and tight to protect the root and the bone, and then there's a space around every tooth that's loose. It's a pocket. It's like the cuff of a sleeve. It's, we can get in between there. So if all of this is tight and firm, and this is the periodontal pocket, this is where bacteria grows and seeps down into. You have plaque and tartar. This is where infection starts. So if you want to think of it as a cuff of a sleeve where this is not tight, but it's snug but not tight on the tooth and attached. It's unattached so it can be stretched and manipulated, okay? So we're taking a periodontal probe and we're sticking it down into that pocket and we're taking six readings around the tooth. We take three on the outside and we take three on the inside. A lot of times we have an assistant helping with us, sometimes we don't. So if we have an assistant we're going to call the numbers out to them. If we don't we're going to be writing them on a piece of paper or typing them into the computer ourselves. And we also record all of the bleeding points around the tooth because this is also extremely important to know. And then we're gonna get into that. What is a periodontal probe? It kind of looks like this. There's different versions of this. You can see on here, there's a little line and then a big fat line. And then more lines, a big fat line, and two. So this is down here, the first line's a one millimeter. When you get to this thick fat line, if we're probing up to a, that thick first fat line that's five, this is 10, the top line is 12 millimeters. So we're either probing between a one and 12 millimeters around the tooth. What does this look like? Well, let me show you. This looks like. So we take our probe, and we're going to insert it onto the tooth. So but most of our programs have a start on this upper right. So I start on your upper right, back corner of the last tooth. And I go up underneath here, I can do it yeah there we go so this one's gonna take me pretty far and you'll be able to see through here so I'm just gonna go into this one so this is what it would look like if we go into the mouth so healthy would be let's see there's one two there's a three millimeter pocket right there four and see that thick black line right there it's really hard if I go down to there that's a five now we know healthy is between one and three if you have four millimeter pockets, more than likely, all that means is this gum tissue that surrounds all the teeth is swollen. So when it swells, it gives you what's considered a pseudo pocket, fake pocket, because this is swollen, but you still have the correct bone level down underneath here. So that's what we're checking is the bone level around the teeth. So these teeth 
every tooth sits in the bone. The bone covers all of the root surfaces down to, which this is a model again, this is not real teeth. So this white and yellow line. This yellow line right here is the root surface of your teeth. Your gum tissue is naturally supposed to cover all the way to there and a little bit above, just about a millimeter above, where you can't see the root surface. It's, this is supposed to be completely encompassed in bone and gum tissue. That's extremely healthy. Most adults, we look like this. We don't look like this. You can look like this in your teenage years. Once you get into your 30s, especially 40s, a lot of people do have gum recession. They clench their teeth, they grind their teeth, they may have had some bone loss, they have some issues. It happens more than other things. It's not always just brushing your teeth. So this is kind of a realistic picture. Someone had a little bit of bone loss up here, a little bit of root exposure. Okay, so what? So what's the point we're doing here? Periodontal pop probing. So if we go down here, I'm getting a four millimeter pocket. Sweet, I'll take that. We go around, we walk this and dance this all the way around the tooth and we're checking the, the pockets. So if we, if this is like a four, this is a two, this is a four, great. If this is a three, two, three, three, two, three. I'm doing this really fast and not perfect. That's what we want. If you get twos, threes, ones, that is the numbers that we want. So if you have a five or a six or a seven, or better yet, a 10. That's a lot of bone loss. If you get a six millimeter pocket, you have gum disease. You have the you have periodontal disease. You have bone loss that's happened in between these teeth. On the outsides, if you have a five millimeter pocket, and I can get this probe down five millimeters to there, that's bone loss. We want it to be here versus here. That's a lot of root surface to clean. You can't clean that at home. So let me show you what I mean. A two millimeter pocket here, we can go down one, two millimeters. This, you could still water pick underneath here, your bristles of your toothbrush can slightly flare underneath here, you can keep that clean. If I get down here where it's five, that surface, I'm getting in what's called that furcation. So this tooth has three roots. The furcation is the access, the area in between these roots. So this is rounded. It's not a flat surface. It's a rounded surface. And it dips down in. It's not, see that? You can tell. It dips down in. This is not easy to keep clean. And you'll get bacteria in here, and it'll just sit, and it'll build tartar, harden into tartar. And then that's just bacteria that's going to eat the way of the bone, okay? These upper teeth are some of the first teeth when they get diseased, they're the first ones that people will lose because they're the hardest to keep clean because they're big, they have three roots, and they're just hard to clean. See all these cav concavities on there? Everyone thinks that their teeth are shaped like squares, and they're not. There's this little concavity here. There's all this concavity here, okay? So what your hygienist will do, will go around the outside, we do all the outsides, then we come back and we go around all of the insides. We do the same thing. Come back around all the insides and we're measuring all the way around. And then we'll go down to the bottom and we'll do the same thing. We'll get in between and we measure. And this is pretty much almost identical to what it looks like in every person's mouth, except you can't see their roots because this is opaque. It's not a translucent surface, so I can't see through and see their roots. But that's what we're doing. And if you're flossing correctly, if you are even flossing, unless you're water picking, this is the space that you're cleaning out down underneath in here. So this five millimeters, your floss can't reach that. It can only reach three millimeters under the gum tissue, right to get in there, right to there. That's all that you can clean with a string of floss. You can't clean that extra two millimeters with a string of floss, and you're only going in between. You're not going to be able to come out here on the outside. 
So this is one of the reasons why if you have a three millimeter pocket, you can go around here and hug the floss so the floss hugs this curvature and cleans this little side of the tooth. So that's one of the things to remember with flossing. If you're using a water pick, you're gonna hold it here for a one, two, three. You're gonna trace around here and hold again for a one, two, three. That's gonna blast all of that bacteria out of there and not allow it to grow and form into tartar. Why is this important? Well, if you're getting probed accurately, the numbers we wanna see that equal healthy are between one and three millimeters. Like I said already, if you get to a four, we know the gum tissue is swollen. So if you have four millimeter pockets with bleeding, you have gingivitis. So your gum tissue is swollen. It gets bigger because there's infection and bacteria in there. Things swell. Think if you had a cut infected, does it swell? Absolutely, because it's infected. It swells, it gets bigger, and then when it gets healed and healthy, everything shrinks back. So when you have bleeding, that tells us that bacteria and infection are present. So when we walk our probe around the teeth, sometimes we get bleeding right away. What does that mean? That means the lining of that pocket is so infected that just the lightest touch breaking through there breaks that lining and causes a bleed because it's so thin where it's not protected the thin it could because it's infected so it's super thin and then you just puncture it and I'm not saying we go and hammer in there I'm just saying we're just gently pushing the probe in there and it'll bleed so when it bleeds immediately we know that you're infected so what I do is I go around all of the outside because this is my program so every program varies some people go around the outsides of your teeth they record every spot that bleeds so you could hear distal mesial facial or lingual of 2, 4, 6, 10, 14. Your teeth numbers go from 1 to 32. If you do not have your wisdom teeth, your teeth numbers go 2 to 15 and then it drops to the bottom and it starts with 18 around to number 31. So we can vary any one and every number that we call out first, that correlates to the tooth number and then we'll say the surface that it's correlating to. So like I said, some programs record every surface that bleeds. Other programs like mine, we record just every tooth that bleeds. So we wanna see every tooth that bleeds. So if we're probing and we say there's generalized bleeding, that means that almost every single tooth in your head has bleeding, whether it's one surface or four surfaces on the teeth, it's bleeding. The more bleeding you have, the more infection you have present. You're unhealthy. Why am I smiling? It's not funny. I have no idea why I'm smiling. But the less bleeding you have, the healthier you are. You don't want to bleed. Bleeding gums are the sign of infection. Most people, if they floss correctly and their gums bleed, they stop, ble they stop flossing. And they go, well, it's bleeding, so I stopped. If your gums are bleeding, that's the sign to tell you, hey, I'm not healthy. You need to clean me more. We need fixed. Healthy gums do not bleed. Does your skin just bleed? You don't bleed from areas being healthy, correct? If they're unhealthy, you know, cause I'm not just gonna seep blood out of my arm without a cut. Well, a cut's not a healthy thing. That's an open wound to the inside of my body. Same thing in your mouth. If it's bleeding, it's not healthy. So you have to clean them more and get the bacteria out and constantly flush it and get it out. Now there are a lot of people that if they haven't gone to the dentist anywhere from two plus years and they'll have a ton of bleeding, they can get it under control, but they could still have a ton of tartar in their mouth and they can sit in the chair, you can sit in the chair and you can tell your hygienist, I don't get any bleeding, but you can still have tartar underneath the tissue. It's just you're not allowing new stuff to grow and stay infected. So especially if you're using a water pick and you're flushing everything out, you're keeping the bacteria from growing and festering, but there still could be an underlying infection in there. So this is where we go back to the probe depths. This is where we can take and explore and feel under the teeth. And if we feel those root surfaces and they're rough, then we know we can feel tartar. So the, the pocket depths are the number one indicator of how healthy or unhealthy. The second indicator is the bleeding. So when you sit down in my chair, which my doctors see every new patient that comes through our office, and they do the initial probing, they take the initial, the initial pocket depths, and then they send them to us for whatever type of cleaning they need. 
So if they need a maintenance cleaning, which we rarely do on a new patient, or most of the time we're, we're seeing them for periodontal therapy. We're trying to get their disease under control so that we can halt the, per, the progress of it and then keep them healthy, teach them how to take care of their mouth, shorten their recalls, get them in every three months, and then maintain what they have. And I've had patients that have had gum disease for 30 years out of their life, and they have had five millimeter pockets for 25 of those 30 years. Do you think I'm going to get concerned? Absolutely not. Because some people, that's your normal. That's your new healthy. So if you've been maintained for years upon years upon years, and you don't have bleeding, but you have five millimeter pockets, and your hygienist feels that you're good and everything's healthy, that's your mouth. There's no textbook to say you have to have four millimeter pockets, you can only have four millimeters, and that's healthy. That's not true. Because once you have bone loss, you rarely have the chance to grow it back. Now our periodontal therapy that we do, yeah, sometimes we get bone regeneration. It's not often, but it does, but it can regenerate because what we're hoping for is the tissue to attach back to the teeth, the pocket shrinks, they have a smaller space to clean. So again, think about that probe. Instead of cleaning an eight millimeter pocket up here, we can go down and shrink it to a four. That's a lot smaller of a space to clean. So we're stoked with that because that means there's not eight millimeters down the side of that tooth for bacteria to bury itself and sit and fester and cause more infection and more bone loss. If your hygienist is not probing, please ask them to. And if they are probing and doing it silently, ask them, what's my numbers look like? Where am I at? How healthy am I? How unhealthy am I? Where am I at? Is there something I can change? Because there's a legit reason why we check your probe depths. That checks the health of your mouth. So yeah, can it be uncomfortable if you're super inflamed and infected? Hell yeah, it can be uncomfortable. But again, it has to be done. And if it's done correctly, yeah, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. But if you really want your mouth to be healthy, you want it to be just a little bit uncomfortable. So then you know exactly what's going on. Then you know exactly how to fix it. So that's periodontal probing in a nutshell. <laughs> If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to put the comments in the chat, in the comment section. I will answer them, I respond if you have a question, and if I don't get to it, somehow I missed it. But I try my best to answer every question that is asked. Again, I hope this makes sense. I hope this helps, because probing is extremely important. It's an important step into knowing your health, and, and, and it should be the first thing done besides x-rays if you're a new patient to a practice. They should check everything over, probe your teeth. Okay, let's see where your health is. Let's just see where you stand. And you, like I said, you should be having this done once a year. If you have gum disease, you should have it done twice a year because the gum disease, if you're not getting seen every three months, the gum disease will turn around every 90 days and it starts to progress again. So if you have periodontal disease, you should be getting your teeth cleaned every 90 days. If you're not, you really need to consider changing your recalls because every six months is not beneficial. You'll never be able to arrest the disease and it'll continue to progress for your lifetime. To wrap it back up, periodontal probing should be done once a year, if not twice. It is to check the pockets all the way around your teeth, to measure the bone level around the teeth, check for bleeding, check for inflammation. So we want healthy bone levels. Again, healthy pockets, one to four millimeters. We can have localized fives and be fine. But if you're probing six millimeters or more on multiple teeth, you have gum disease, and if those are bleeding, you have active gum disease, and you need to decide and make a decision how to arrest that, get it cleaned, and get it taken care of. All right, guys, once again, I cannot thank you enough for being here. I cannot thank you enough for your support, and I hope all of these videos are helping you in your journey to the health of your mouth. Take care. I'll see you soon.